jets move forward by shooting passes backward. Rockets move forward by shooting hot gases backward too. Does the rocket move because the hot gases push against the earth or the air? No. But how can things move without pushing against something else? Let's see. Let's think first about the usual ways of moving things. Let's see that action again. And this time, think of the force that moves the cart. The force comes from outside the cart. And the direction of the force is the same as the direction the cart moves. Here's another way of making the cart move. Let's think of the force again. The force of the push is this way. But the cart moves in the opposite direction. Why? Because of another force we haven't shown. When the man pushes against the wall, the wall is also pushing back against the man. For every action force pushing against an object, there's an equal and opposite reaction force pushing back. This is a law of physics discovered by Sir Isaac Newton. It is the reaction force which moves the man and cart. So far, we've pushed against a stationary object, a wall. But what if the wall were free to move? Now, with the wall on wheels, the action force will move the wall. And yet, the reaction force will still move the man. The wall, however, is outside the cart, but a rocket moves without pushing against an outside object. Suppose we place some sacks of sand on the cart. Once again, an action force this way will produce a reaction force in the opposite direction. What would happen if you pushed objects with less mass backward? The tiny droplets that are in this spray, for instance. Can we exert sufficient force against the droplets to move the cart? Let's see. We'll use a tank of gas which has been compressed under great pressure. Yes, we can move the cart forward by shooting tiny droplets backward with sufficient force. Just as the reaction forces from tiny molecules of gases in jet and rocket engines move them forward. What causes the molecules of gas to shoot out of the jet at such high speed? Here are the parts of a jet engine we need to know the compressor, the burning chamber with the fuel injectors, and the turbine. When the engine is operating, air is drawn into the engine by means of the compressor in the same way that the turning blades of a fan pull in smoke. Now the air is forced into the burning chamber, where it is mixed with fuel sprayed from the fuel injectors. When the fuel burns, it produces hot expanding gases. We can see how these gases move a jet engine forward by burning some matches inside a test tube sealed with a cork. We'll ignite the matches by focusing sunlight on them with a magnifying glass. The cork pops out backward and the tube moves forward. Why? Let's repeat the experiment in animation, stopping as we go to see what happens at each step along the way. When the matches ignite, hot expanding gas is produced. This gas, like the hot gases in the jet, exerts action forces. 
These action forces push equally in all directions at the moment before the cork pops out. At the same time, reaction forces are exerted by the sides of the tube and the cork holding the gas in. The action forces are the ones which cause the test tube or a jet to move. How? Well, as the cork pops out, the action forces become unbalanced. The action forces along the sides of the tube still balance each other, but now that the cork is out, there are no longer any backward action forces to balance the forward action forces pressing against the front of the tube. So an unbalanced force acts, pushing the test tube or a jet forward. Now let's do it again and think about the reaction forces. When the cork pops out, the reaction forces become unbalanced too. The reaction forces along the sides of the tube are still balanced, but there are no forward reaction forces to balance the backward reaction forces. So an unbalanced force acts on the gases, pushing them backward and out. Gases shoot out the rear of a jet for the same reason. As the gases in a jet engine shoot out the rear, they pass the turbine, setting it in motion. The moving gases turn the turbine in the same way that blowing across a pinwheel can make it turn. The turbine is connected by a shaft to the compressor, so the gases turn the turbine and operate the compressor as they rush out. Because the gases are very hot and expanding rapidly, they move out of the jet with tremendous speed, moving the engine and the airplane forward. A jet engine uses air for the oxygen to burn fuel, so the jet can fly above the Earth's atmosphere. But a rocket contains its own source of oxygen, so a rocket can go above the atmosphere. Inside one type of rocket, there is a supply of liquid fuel and a supply of liquid oxygen. The two liquids are brought together in a chamber and burned to produce hot gases. This arrangement produces hotter gases that move with greater force and speed than can be produced in a jet. To see why, let's look at this oxyacetylene torch. Right now, it's using only the oxygen available in the air to burn the fuel, acetylene, which is supplied by this hose. This hose supplies oxygen, which is shut off now. Let's see what happens when we add pure oxygen to the flame. fuel burns faster and hotter, just as it would outside our atmosphere in space. The torch supplies its own oxygen, just as a rocket does. But some rockets use solid fuels. Where do they get their oxygen? Here, charcoal and sulfur, two solids, are being mixed with potassium nitrate, another solid. Potassium nitrate contains oxygen. The mixture of these chemicals forms a solid fuel, gunpowder. We can ignite it electrically. Gunpowder has been used for centuries to power solid fuel rockets used in fireworks. Modern solid fuel rockets use more complex chemicals than those used in gunpowder. The chemicals provide the fuel and oxygen to burn the fuel. If you use more fuel, you increase the power of a rocket engine. But this adds to the rocket's weight and limits the maximum speed that can be reached with a single engine. Greater speeds can be reached by stacking rocket engines, one on top of the other, in stages. The bottom stage is fired first.
When the fuel in this stage is almost consumed, the first stage separates, making the rocket lighter. Then the next stage fires, increasing the speed. Additional stages can be used to put a satellite in orbit and carry men and instruments beyond the Earth's atmosphere to the moon and other planets. Rockets to distant planets. Jets moving at supersonic speeds. These are exciting accomplishments of modern science. But they are based on a very simple principle, the principle of action and reaction. The basic principle behind all jets and rockets.